you know, I've been playing TCGs for a very long time, I'd say 25 years or so, and I have never seen anyone complain about a card in its first week as much as I've seen people bitch about Loki. Now, for those of you who don't know, I am a huge Marvel Snap fan. I love the game. It's actually probably one of my favorite TCGs of all time. I think digital TCGs is the future. And, you know, as much as I loved Duel Masters, Yu-Gi-Oh!, the Card Captor TCG, different Dragon Ball TCGs, Pokemon, Digimon, all of those great games, none of them really compare to Marvel Snap. It's a very quick game. But there's such a great collection of cards. Yeah, maybe obtaining them can be a bit difficult. One thing I can say is, is that broken cards, meta shifting cards, they're usually made available to people because of the Seasons Pass. Loki is the card that comes with this Seasons Pass and it's really fucking good. I'm someone who stands Mirage and I've been trying to figure out how to make her work in Dino decks, but Loki is like a better mirage in a way. A 3 drop with 5 power, Loki's on reveal ability is it replaces your hand with cards from your opponent's starting deck, giving them minus 1 cost. Now I don't need to have to tell you why that is really good. It works with collector, it works with dino, it works with pretty much anything really. The thing is, I've played against Loki not that many times, maybe 20 or so times since it came out earlier this week. I've lost to Loki maybe three or four times. I know Loki is a good card and it's easily accessible, so a lot of people are running it. However, if you can't see that your opponent is about to drop Loki, then I think you're the problem. If you can't figure out how to operate what decks you were using before Loki came out to be successful against Loki decks, again, you're the problem. I know Marvel Snap is one of those games where it's fun to bitch and moan about certain changes. God knows how much I miss getting collector's tokens and now it's so hard to get really good cards. And I only just finished Pool 3 after playing for like 6 months basically every single day, a couple hours a day. And Marvel isn't one of those games you can't go out and buy Null unless it's a variant or it's in the token shop. You can't go out and buy whatever card you want. So I can see why everyone would be very excited with getting Loki right away because it already fits into so many other decks. Even if you're missing one or two cards to make a popular deck work, Loki can fit into basically anything that you're running and it's fun. But the backlash that Loki has been getting makes me realize that a lot of people who play Snap probably aren't very good at TCGs in general. Yeah, and that's a harsh thing to say, but then again, I've been watching some of these content creators stream and uh, a lot of them aren't very good. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think the Loki discourse is based around the fact that it's a three drop with five power. That's a lot. I do think the power could definitely be nerfed. Maybe after this season, they'll pull down Loki's power a bit. I think it's good as a 3-3. Three, three. I would even settle for a 3-4, but a 3-3 a, a three, three seems pretty fair. I'd keep the same ability. Uh, the minus one cost thing, I can see why people would be a little put off with that and think it's too powerful. But again, like Loki is a pivotal character in Marvel, MCU especially. It would be a shame if Second Dinner keeps on nerfing so many cards not too long after they come out. One of the benefits of a digital TCG is the fact that you can amend rules. So locations or how often something appears or how much something costs or the ability of a card. Hell, look at Spider-Man. How many abilities has Spider-Man had since Snap came out? I think Second Dinner finally got it right. It's a flavorful effect. It's an aggressive moveability. I think Spider-Man's most recent ability works a lot better than locking off a lane. This can also apply to Kitty Pride or Galactus, cards that literally destroyed the meta as they came out, but they were adjusted or taken out of the game. I'm into that. I think that's a great way of handling your, your property. And I know Second Dinner does truly care about the player base. They do listen to our complaints, but I'm really hoping they don't make a big change on Loki or they at least let it wait for a bit longer. I don't think Loki came and changed the meta the same way High Evolutionary did, or the way Doom did a few months back, or the way the aforementioned Kitty Pride did when she was first released. No, Loki is just a generalized card that can fit into any deck. And the thing about Loki's ability is that it fits his character so well. As I mentioned, I played Loki decks like two dozen times already, 
And I've only lost a handful of times because I know what to expect. I know what the card did. It's a one-off ability. Sure, if five power in that lane, they're probably going to win that lane. But at the same time, if your opponent has Collector in one lane and they have Loki in the other, and they're, let's say, like the middle is empty, you should know how to play around that. There are so many other decks that exist that will drop a big butt card and they have something else that's gaining power based off of that big butt card having an ongoing or on reveal ability. But I don't see anyone bitching about those cards. I don't see anyone complaining about the interactions, those certain cards, the same way they are with Loki. No, I just wanted to kind of get that out there. Uh, I know my friends have even been debating about how overpowered Loki is, but I don't think it is. I think it's just understanding what this game is supposed to be knowing how your decks operate against other decks and once you have an idea of those interactions you'll know how to play around them yes i do agree loki does need to get a bit of a nerf yes i do think that when you put out meta defining cards and they're so easily accessible you're going to get an influx of players who are complaining about this sudden impact but the reality is loki is a above average card and if you're not able to understand how to play with it and play around it, then you're probably a below average player. Just think about it. Surfer, Sarah, High Evolutionary, all of these decks are still out there. Loki didn't eradicate three or four popular net decks. It didn't replace everything that we were playing. People are acting like Loki is chaos control. A lot of these content creators in the Marvel Snap space are using their platform as a, a clout chasing engine because there's no way they sat down and thought before tweeting half the bullshit that they're tweeting that Loki is a busted card. You don't need to try and figure out recipes to play around Loki. Play the exact same deck that you're playing. It's not that big of a deal. Fuck, run Cosmo if you absolutely feel the need to have something to counter Loki. But I think it's a really good card, and I think the game is in a great place, and I think the content creators need to get good.